about the negotiation of those contracts. We talked about the mechanism for negotiating a good contract. In fact, today in our presentations, you all will be discussing a model contract that you would have um, theoretically negotiated with management. So this is now a conversation about what happens after that ideal contract that you have negotiated comes to fruition. This is really what some people would argue is the, is the hard part. It's the hard part because you have to now, particularly who? Who's now the person who has to make sure that this contract is upheld from the side of the, the union? Who in particular, the employees, but who particularly amongst the employees is going to be the, the first line? The steward, exactly. The steward is going to be the first line of reporting if there's an issue. And so if you as a steward, steward um, are going to be going about your work, you're going to be hearing the issues of whether or not the terms that you've negotiated are satisfactory or not. And you're going to be testing these, 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 these terms in real life. Um, and all of this, again, has the uh, origin in the context of the bargain for the bargain for collective bargaining agreement. Again, the, the bargaining that takes place before this time sets you up for now the management. So who is responsible for taking the initiative in the, the actual administration and keeping tabs on the contract? Um, administration, Miss Washington, who's responsible for that? Taking the initiative. Can you repeat the question? Who's responsible? So, I'm sorry. What'd you say, Miss 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 Washington? <coughs> Management. So tell me about that. Are they responsible for filing a grievance when a union or a, a worker uh, violates the contract? Yes. They are? Oh <laughs> what do they do? Can we start over? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Can you start over? My book was over. Sorry, Mr. Ave. I mean, I'm sorry, Mr. Ms. V, jump in here and help her. What happens? <laughs> Mm -hmm. What happens when a um, employee violates one of the terms um, of the of the agreement? Don't they get written up or something? What happens? They get written up. Isn't that what usually happens? They get written up, and then what? What happens? Um, or some other type of disciplinary action, right? Um, and what happens if the union believes Ms. Vaden? Ms. Ms. Thompson, go ahead. You can join in. It's a test of action to your grievance. And what um, what what spells out the mechanism for conducting the grievance? The contract spells out the resolution process and the management decision stays unless the unless and until the reverse or modify at some step in the process. All right. So what if the um, the management changes the way it operates, Miss Miss Vaden. What happened then? Is 
if the, if the management changes, the mechanism by how they operate, what happens? Either Ms. Vaden or, or Ms. Washington. Go ahead, Miss Miss Sam. Uh, Sam, expected to conform to the change. Exactly, exactly. You can have a seat. Um, so, in the context then of um, discipline, what are um, what are some of the the types of discipline a employee may be subjected to, Miss Vaden? Suspension. Mm -hmm. Demotion mm -hmm. or discharge. Exactly. And what are some of the, um, the, the types of infractions that might be um, caused for those types of disciplinary actions? Are you talking to any manager? Yeah. Um, if you're absent, insubordinate, or dishonest. Mm -hmm. Poor productivity, rule violations. And what are some of the types of rule violations that might exist in a, a typical um, contract? Sex, uh, sex abuse and sexual harassment. Mm-hmm, exactly. And um, <laughs> what must happen before an employer can impose disciplinary action for a, um, you know, for either a rule violation or otherwise? Observe employees behavior. Observe employees behaving unsatisfactorily. Ms. Vaden. Ms. Vaden. Yeah. Can you um, check yourself? So what were you saying? Must observe the behavior unsatisfactorily. And so, what, what, um, what do you think if, like a, if the employer again is um, selectively singling out one employee versus another? What is, what do you think is the appropriate response, Miss Washington? What do you think is the appropriate response, Ms. Vaden? Again, if an employer seeks to punish one employee different from the other, then what, what is the appropriate response? Is this his last chance to read that, is that it? No, I'm asking you to just, based upon the analysis and the information here, give me what, what, what your thoughts are. Okay, so uh, repeat the question because I do have an answer, but I just don't know if you agree with. Me. Well, what is the, what is your um your analysis? Uh, because we get we have a, a limited amount of time. What is what is your thought? Okay, so you're asking me as the employer if I feel my manager is singling me out. What am I gonna do? If the employees feel that again the management is singling out one employee for selective punishment of the rules. And what is an appropriate response well, if it was for the me, union? I would go to HR, but I know you won't like that. Well, I'm asking, based upon the analysis, what do you think, Ms. Vaden? Huh? What should the union do if they only point out one person? Exactly. Make the employees check everybody else's come go to everybody else's to see if it's more than one person? Yeah. I mean, the, again, as the, as the book points out, the union's obligation is to verify that the employers are are basically treating the employees as a whole fairly, based upon the contract. So like, if a if a if, as you said, if they are again singling out one employee for selective punishment, 
then it is not not a cause for a grievance, right? Because again, grievances can be filed by on the behalf of an individual, uh, an, on behalf of an individual employee, or can be filed on behalf of the employees as a group. You see the difference there. So again, that's what the um, that's what the uh, the the key uh, principle to bring across is what is the union's job and responsibility. Now, tell me about just in closing, since you raised it. Miss uh, Washington, what is last chance agreement? What is that? Um, well, when an employee has repeatedly breached rules and has been disciplined, and the employees and the employee's behavior does not change, employers and unions must place a last chance agreement in attempt to save the employee's job. Exactly. All right. Have a seat. So again, we know that um, that these. Contractual terms are nothing unless, again, the people who negotiated those are going to, again, hold uh, up not only their bargain or their side of the bargain, but also uh, are going to make sure that the other side does the same. All right. Now, um, what are some of the um, the areas of possible? Um, contention in the context of contract administration. What are some of the some of the areas of contention? Miss That was Miss Washington. Okay. You, Mr. Solomon, tell me what are some of the areas of possible contention? Mm -hmm. What is one area of possible contention? Help him out, Mr. Scott. Work assignment? Tell me about that. Uh, disputes may occur over which job classification is entitled to perform a certain work. For oh. example, assume that you just. No, go ahead. For example, assume that an electrical generating plant using coal fire boilers to generate steam shuts down the boiler for rebreaking. So that's a, so that's a good that's a good good example because or a good issue because when I was an engineer at a Ford Motor Company plant, um, I was responsible for developing a system that would address a safety hazard um, at our particular plant. So I had to actually identify the problem, then develop a system to actually address that. And I came up with a, a lift, a lift that would actually um, you know, elevate uh, a worker to to address a particular um, area on the on the uh, assembly line, as opposed to that person having to possibly climb and uh, possibly injure him or herself. But what I found when I was again uh, working to actually bring this lift in was that um, that only certain people were res were uh, eligible. Only certain people were able actually to move the equipment. The people who were actually going to use the equipment, according to the contract, were prohibited from actually moving that equipment, right? So again, that's a, a very good point. Again, work assignments, all right? What's another um, example, Mr. Uh, Mr. Solomon? Individual personnel assignments. Um, well, okay, tell me about that. Um, personnel assignment grievances most often concern promotions, layoffs, transfers, and shift assignments. Most contracts specify that seniority, seniority and merit or experience on a particular job will govern. So where do, where do the disputes come up? Uh, they often relate to layoffs and shift preferences. What do you mean by that? Uh, people who are laid off may believe they are entitled to jobs or union workers 
and other departments who have been retained. While contracts normally specify that employees must be qualified for a job, if a junior employee is bumped by a senior employee, they may, there may be a dispute regarding whether the senior employee, employee actually possesses the claim qualifications. All right, key issue because bumping not only um, impacts those who are laid off, but also those who are bumped or were in departments where bumping has taken place, all right? How about um, issues of incentives, Mr. Uh, Mr. Scott? Tell me about that. How can incentives, what's the key issue in incentives? And I don't want you to read me the entire thing, but what is the issue of contention in the context of incentives? Uh, change in pay. And so, where where might there be a point of grievance? If an employee uh, if an employee is moved from an essential job to a non-essential job, wages will decrease. And so, then a grievance might arise because of what? Uh, payment issues. Payment will go. Right, because essentially they might argue that what, Mr. Mr. Solomon. Right, because the, because of what? Because of the, they might argue that the new position is really almost identical to the old position, but they're not getting again the incentive pay. Right? How about um, the the next one, Mister uh, Mister Solomon? Uh, hours of work. And, and and what's the key issue of grievance there? They involve overtime requirements and work schedules. For example, if the firm has maintained an 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. shift to mail customer orders and a spray company moves its shipping schedule from 4 p.m. to 3 p.m., then a 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. shift better be as needed. This change will affect employees and grievances may result. Exactly. Anytime you're going to change the work schedule, you better believe that that's going to be an issue of contention, right? How about... Uh, what else, Mr. Scott? Uh, a grievance might also result if the assignment is considered arbitrary or punitive. Um, how, how, how so? Problems, uh, also might arise I'm asking you, what are, what are the other uh, er production pay. What what about those? Uh, employers and unions often agree on output rates. I mean, well, if stuff isn't moving out fast enough, you might be wanting to pay you some more, or more, or they might be wanting to pay you less. Exactly, exactly. How about how about um, supervisors who do work similar to when when even I going back to the example before. When the guy told me, well, it wasn't his job to actually move my lift system that I had developed with such ingenuity into its place, he said that it was not his job, right? That he was, in fact, barred from moving it by the contract. What did I say? What do you think I said, Mr. Solomon? Okay, I'm going to do it myself, right? No problem. You don't want to move it? I'll move it myself. What, 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 what was the issue there, Mr. Solomon? Most contracts um, forbid supervisors to perform production work to set them down trading the job to the employee. Exactly. Not only was that not the um, employee who was working on that production line's job, right? But again, if he had done that, then that would have actually, again, um, or if I had done that myself, rather, then that would have been an issue for the person whose job, what? It was, right? So again, those are uh, other issues that you gotta 
you got to be looking out for, right? Um, how about the working conditions? Tell me about that, Mr. Uh, Scott. And if they have a valid reason to uh, lead, believe that there's a, 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 an injury going to be created if they perform that, then um, what are they able to do in most contracts, Mr. Solomon? <laughs> hmm? What is the, again, the employee entitled to do if they think that the work is going to lead to their... Follow agreements. Mr. Mr. Scott, help them out. Mr. Mason, go ahead and get the point. You, you, you got it. Go ahead. Huh? Go ahead, Mr. Mason. Go ahead. What is an employee entitled to do if he believes that the work assignment is going to cause his or her injury? He can refuse to do it. Absolutely. But what must he do? How must he do that? Mr. Mr. Either Mr. Scott or Mr. Mason, either one. How must that employee do it? He has to take it to his manager to like prove it. What's the manner? The manner. What must be his mannerism? He has to be professional about it. He has to be professional. He cannot be what? Like angry. He cannot be insubordinate. Insubordinate. That's the key issue. He cannot be insubordinate, and he generally has to have been, you know, had a, a history of being loyal. All right? Um. So these are the key that in the, in the context of arbitration, if it comes down to an arbitration, the arbitrator will usually rule for an employee if, again, there were uh, no past history of um, disloyalty or of the, thank you, of the, um, well, thank you, Ms. <laughs> so we're going to skip you guys can have a seat um, what happens again what happens if you have um, that Let's go to, there's a, um, I want you to check out this figure right here. This is the grievance procedure process that you all should, should be aware of, right? So first, if there is a, um, if you have a grievance, tell me what happens. Miss. Miss uh, Miss Poe and Miss Prince, walk walk me through it. If you're a union, you have a grievance. What do you do? You'll take the uh, union side, Miss uh, Prince, and you take the uh, the uh, management side, Miss Poe. So tell me, huh? Oh, sorry. Okay, go ahead. You, you can get it, Ms. Mathis. Ms. No, uh, you you'll get union. You, you'll be the union. So the union, Ms. Ms. Mathis, what, what happens when you have a grievance? Um, I filed a grievance, and then after that, I... Um, and what, okay, let me go back to the other side. The management, when she files a grievance, what 
What um requested release granted. Or what? Or supervisor denied. Okay, and if the supervisor denies it, what happens to uh, what goes next, Ms. Mathis? It says it submit, submits it to the what to the who? What is the IR? The industrial relations representative. All right. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, and then what? What happens the on the uh, company side? The IR representative might deny. And if um, if the a case involves a employee discharge then what is the union likely to do to that, Ms. Mathis? <laughs> if, it, if it involves an employee discharge, um, then as you said, then it's likely to go to the negotiation committee because it's a big issue, right? But most issues are gonna be resolved really at that at that point, even before going to the negotiation committee, most of them. So then what happens next to step four? What uh, on the on the union side, Ms. Mathis? Submit the um, IR, submit to the um, to the IR, the IR director. Well, what, okay, and so um, what happens in terms of who's going to resolve that, that dispute? All right, so the IR, so first he's going to go submit to the IR, and if the uh, IR director denies it, then what happens? If the IR, I said, I'm sorry, no. If the IR director denies it, they go to arbitration, right? But before it goes to arbitration, what has to happen? Who's going to resolve that, that dispute? Hmm? Who's going to resolve that dispute? Who? No, the who? Who's going to who's going to resolve the arbitration? The arbitrator. Absolutely. Again, the umpire, right, is going to come from, uh, again, where, where are the sources of, of arbitrators? What is the source? Where are you going to get the arbitrators? What are the two, two resources that are named? Two resources that are named. Mr. Pollock, jump in and help us. Yep. We're finding sources of arbitrators. You find it, Ms. Mathis? Grievance and resolution? What'd you say, Ms. Mathis? What is it? Grievance? 
this uh, this uh, this Latin. She's here. This Latin. What do you think? Sources of arbitrary. Who are you going to tap to be your arbitrator? Who are you going to tap? Where are you going to find your arbitrators? Who are you going to tap, Miss Miss Mathis? Okay, and how many are you going to have? Ah, uh, number. What's the other source, Miss uh, Latney? You said who, Miss Paul? Federal Mediation and Conciliation Service. Exactly. So those are going to be your uh, resources for um, for tapping. You, you, Miss uh, Miss uh, Poe, you can have a seat, and Miss uh, Miss Matthews, you can have a seat. Now, Miss Laddie, tell me how much time do you have to resolve a um, an arbitration? How many, Mr. Apollo? Two, two to five days generally is going to be uh, for the resolution at the first step. And how about step three? Three to ten days. Three to ten days, right? And how about if um, the management denies step three grievance, Miss Miss um, Ladney? What happens? How many days do you have now? If the management denies step three grievance, what happens? Pardon me? <laughs> days to do what? And what happens if the union doesn't make a timely demand? Oh, <laughs> What happened is if um, the arbitration is demanded, Mr. Pollock? How long could a um, unresolved dispute be arbitrated for, um, Miss Ladney? Exactly. What's the average? What's the average study? What's the average um, time for which uh, grievances are settled generally, Mister Pollock? Ten to fourteen days. Ten to fourteen days. Now. You know, one of the key things you, you, you need to understand with this, um, with, thank you, with this um, grievance process is the key to resolving the grievance in your favor. What do you think is the most important process in that whole, the important stop, step in that whole process, Miss uh, Miss Ladney? That looking at that 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 figure, fourteen three. What do you think is the most important important process? Or important step in that process? What would you think, Mr. Pollock, looking at that, this right here? What do you think is most important? Particularly around here, what do you think in the arbitration process? What do you think is the most important? Pardon me. Submitting it on time is key, right? But in in the context of the arbitration, once it's once it's submitted on time in the arbitration process itself, what is the what is the key point? Do you think 
we, that can make all the difference in the world for the sides. Well, one of the key differences, or one of the key steps, the key actions is, as they said before, right, selecting what? The arbitrator. If the arbitrator, if I'm a union, right, and the arbitrator is somebody who has historically sided with the management, do I want them? No. If I'm the management and the arbitrator is somebody who is a former uh, union leader before going to law school and becoming a lawyer, you think I want that person? Yeah. No. So again, what you want to do is do what, Miss Latney? Oh. <laughs> what do you think you want to do based upon what I just shared with you? Huh? What do you think you want to do? If you are a, a person who is, again, involved with selecting the arbitrator, what do you think it's important for you to do? And how do you do that, Ms. Ladney? Hmm? How do you think, you, how, 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 does that, how does that go about? Exactly, by doing what, Ms. Ladney? By researching, right? Researching. You want to research who that person is on the panel. Because they, what will happen is they'll give you names. And again, if you don't respond to those names, this happened to me, I'm telling you firsthand, in terms of arbitration I was involved in. I didn't respond in the, in the manner in which I was supposed to have responded, right? So I was supposed to have responded and said who I didn't want. I did say who I didn't want, right? But then they came back with a, a, a new list and I didn't respond to that new list. And then they selected somebody from this new list who I didn't want. And I said, well, no, I don't, I don't want that person. But the problem was, is that what, Miss Latney? I had not responded again to the second one in time. So it's key for you all to be paying attention of these time frames, because you can get screwed, basically, if you don't, all right? That's the key thing. All right, so we're going to go ahead and stop here um, and um, get ready for the class presentation.